Hey, Mrs. KJ here, going over 6.07, electrolytic cells. Electrolytic cells use electricity to drive oxidation reduction reactions. They are the opposite of voltaic cells. In the electroplating lab, you coated a nail in a coin with a thin layer of copper. The process of an electrolytic cell is opposite that of a voltaic cell. Electrolytic cells are used industrially to produce pure elements and coat materials with metals. In this lesson, you will learn the electrochemistry involved in electrolytic cells and the various applications of these cells. Goals to find the processes that occur in an electrolytic cell. Interpret a diagram of an electrolytic cell. Electrolytic cells break down compounds into elements, electroplate, and purify metals. You can download the study guide from slide two. Electrolytic cells are used to produce chlorine. Industrial chlorine is used to manufacture other chemicals, bleach paper pulp, and disinfect drinking water and wastewater. These processes require vast amounts of chlorine gas and chlorinated water. Industries produce chlorine gas by breaking down concentrated salt water, called brine, in electrochemical cells called electrolytic cells. Electrolytic cells use an electrical power source to drive a non-spontaneous redox reaction. Again, non-spontaneous. We need electricity. Reduction, oxidation. The power supply moves electrons from the anode to the cathode. As in voltaic cells, oxidation half reactions occur at the anode, while reduction half reactions occur at the cathode. So here you can see it's hooked up to the gator clips. It's got electricity. You can see the different chemicals at the end. Okay, so I added to the notes on um, the beginning part I kept like I always do, but I added at electrolytic cells used to make chlorine, electroplate, and purify metals. Electrolytic cells use an electrical power supply to drive a non-spontaneous redox reaction. Electrons move from anode to cathode. Oxidation half reactions occur at the anode. The cathode, of course, is reduction. The process of the electrolytic cell is opposite that of the voltaic cell. Look at the electrolytic cell used to produce chlorine gas. Like voltaic cells, electrolytic cells start with a redox reaction. To make chlorine gas from brine, which is just a, a salt solution or sodium chloride, the redox reactions are as followed. Oxidation, two chlorine negative ones, which are aqueous, yields chlorine gas plus two electrons. The reduction, two waters liquid plus two electrons, yield hydrogen gas plus two hydroxides, which are aqueous. The overall reaction is two sodium chlorides, which are aqueous, plus two liquid waters, yield chlorine gas plus hydrogen gas plus two sodium hydroxides, which are aqueous. In the overall reaction, the sodium ion is the spectator ion. However, this reaction is not spontaneous, so electricity must be provided in order to drive it. Okay, if you have a spectator ion, basically it means that it's there, you need to account for, but notice how it's nowhere up in here. So it's not really the important thing that's going on. Um, it kind of cancels out part of it, although it is, so that's why they call it the spectator ion. Building, basically, sorry, basically the spectator ions you can ignore when you write the oxidation and reduction reactions. Building the electrolysis cell requires a beaker, a battery, wire, two electrodes, and a concentrated sodium chloride solution. The brine will oxidize, that is, it will produce sodium ions and chlorine ions in water. Electrolysis. An electrochemical process in which an electric current is used to drive or force a redox reaction that will not occur spontaneously. A sodium chloride solution can be broken down through electrolysis. So again, use the electricity to break it down. Oxidation in the electrolytic cell occurs at the anode. As in a voltaic cell, the oxidation half reaction of the electrolytic cell will occur at the anode. The anode is hooked up to the positive terminal of the battery. Okay, so I copied the pictures from the lessons into the Word document because there's some mistakes in the picture. So um, the anode is hooked up to the positive terminal of the battery. 
Okay, so positive terminal besides the anode. This is the opposite as a voltaic cell. Okay, the battery draws electrons from the anode strip through the wire, which makes the anode positively charged. This charge is the opposite of that of the anode in the voltaic cell. I know, I know, I know. I've told you a thousand times. Ah, uh, negative, right? In this case, it is messed up. The easiest way to remember it, think of electricity. If something gets hit by lightning, it fries it, right? It makes it a huge mess. That's what this is. We're using electricity, and it makes a big mess of your notes because this time the anode is positive. All right. The anode strip will remove electrons from the chlorine ions in solution, which is oxidation. So we had the aqueous chlorine, and then it becomes chlorine gas, which is collected up in here. So it bubbles up, and then they collect it in the top of the test tube. And it also becomes, besides chlorine gas, the two electrons. The chlorine gas made by oxidation at the anode will bubble out of solution and will be collected above the solution. Okay, so that's why we have these inverted or upside down test tubes. So the liquid can go halfway up into the test tube along with the strip of metal. This is our positive anode because lightning hit it, the electricity, and it messed up our notes. And then it collects the chlorine at the top. By the way, if you're starting to stress out, just so you know, for your part two test, I'm going to let you use notes. So because this is a lot of stuff that you've probably never heard before. So just kind of take it in practice, but just know at least your part two test, you can use notes. So don't give up yet. Reduction in an electrolytic cell occurs at the cathode. Okay, so that part's the same. Oxidation's at the anode, reduction's at the cathode. It's just in this time, the cathode's negative, the anode is positive. As in the voltaic cell, the electrolytic cell's reduction, half reaction, occurs at the cathode. The cathode is hooked up to the negative terminal of the battery. The battery adds electrons to the cathode strip through the wire, which makes the cathode negatively charged. Because remember in a battery, the electrons start at the negative side, they go through everything, and then they come back around and they're attracted mwah, to the positive side. The battery adds electrons to the cathode strip through the wire, which makes the cathode negatively charged. This charge is the opposite of that of the cathode in the voltaic cell. The cathode strip will add electrons to water in solution, which is the reduction. So you have the water plus these electrons. Okay, so these electrons are going through the wire, they're hitting the water that's in the beaker, adding the electrons to the water, which causes the water to split apart, and you have hydrogen gas, which then bubbles up and you collect here, and it has hydroxide, which stays in the beaker. Note that water is more easily reduced than sodium or Na+. The hydrogen gas made by the reaction at the cathode will bubble out of solution and be collected above the solution in this inverted or upside down test tube. Sodium will combine with the OH in the solution to make NaOH again in the solution. Next slide, complete the electrolytic cell. When everything is completely assembled, the brine electrolytic cell operates like this. The battery draws electrons from the anode which is positive, to the cathode, which is negative. Chlorine ions from the brine solution get oxidized to chlorine gas, which is collected. The electrons from the cathode reduce the water to produce hydrogen gas and hydroxide ions. Hydrogen 2 gas gets collected at the cathode. Hydroxide ions from the reduction combine with the sodium ions in solution to make sodium hydroxide. The products of the reaction can be used for various things. Chlorine gas is used for sterilization, bleaching, paper pulp. So in other words, that's how we get white, white paper. It's because they bleach it. And making chemicals. Hydrogen gas is used for fuel and making chemicals. Sodium hydroxide is used to make soap and other chemicals. Electrolytic cells are used to split compounds. You just saw how an electrolytic cell was used to make chlorine gas from brine. Another common electrolytic reaction is to split water into hydrogen gas and oxygen gas. So we take water, we split it up into oxygen plus four electrons. So that's an oxidation. And along with the four electrons as well, there's also four H pluses. Then we have the reduction. Two liquid waters plus two electrons yields hydrogen gas plus two hydroxides in aqueous solution. 
The hydrogen ion and hydroxide ions in solution combine to form water. Furthermore, a small concentration of salt is present in the water to conduct electricity through the water, which by itself is actually a poor conductor. Okay, so it's actually the ions and the other salts that are present that help water be such a good conductor. The pure oxygen and hydrogen gases have many uses in industry and medicine. They're the reduction and the oxidation. Electrolytic cells are used to coat materials. Suppose you want to coat a piece of aluminum with thin gold coating of gold. According to the activity series, gold will not easily oxidize. However, if you introduce a source of electrons, like an electrical energy from battery, you can drive or force the oxidation reaction, oxidation reduction reaction and plate the gold onto the aluminum. The battery moves electrons from the gold strip to the aluminum frame. So the gold electro electrode is the anode. So we have our solid gold. And again, the electrons are attracted to the positive side of the battery. Here's the negative side, so they're going out. It is the anode because we have an oxidation. So we have the gold goes from a charge of 0 to positive 3, plus 3 electrons. The aluminum glasses frame, or the cathode, we have our positive 3 gold plus 3 electrons. It had a plus 3 charge. The charge is reduced to 0. Wah, wah. So it's a reduction. Metallic gold produced from the solution accumulates on the solid aluminum. Electrolytic cells are used to extract metals. Aluminum is extracted from bauxite ore, which is made mostly of alumina, which is Al2O3. A major step involves electrolytic cells. This is called the hall herolt process. In a chemical process, Al2O3 is extracted from bauxite ore. Al2O3 gets dissolved in molten cryolite, which is Na3AlF3, at 1,012 degrees Celsius. The mixture gets poured into an electrolytic cell with a carbon anode and a carbon line container, the cathode. The oxidation, you have solid carbon plus two oxygens with a negative two charge, which is liquid, kind of weird, huh? Yield carbon dioxide gas plus four electrons. Then you have the reduction of Al3 liquid plus three electrons. It's going to give you solid aluminum. Molten aluminum exits the cell and is cooled to a purified metal. The process of using electrolytic cells to extract metals is called electro-winning. <laughs> I know, right? Electro-winning. Woohoo! Aluminum oxide takes the form of bauxite, the primary ore for aluminum. Electrolytic cells are used to purify metals. Crude copper has many metal impurities, lead, zinc, and nickel, for example, and does not conduct electricity well, so ultra-pure copper is needed. An electrolytic cell is used to purify copper in a process called electro-refining. So thick crude copper plates are the anodes, and thin ultra-pure copper plates are the cathodes. Copper sulfate solution fills the cell, so that's that blue liquid that we used in the lab, Electricity is applied to the cell to drive the reaction. So at the oxidation, or the anode, copper is a solid. It yields or breaks down into copper plus two aqueous plus two electrons. The reduction, we have copper plus two aqueous plus two electrons, yield copper as a solid. Metallic impurities that are more active than copper get oxidized but not reduced. So while this step happens, the second step doesn't. Metal impurities that are less active than copper are not oxidized. The cathode grows with ultra-pure copper and the anode shrinks. So if we look at the picture, copper moves from the impure, okay, so it's copper and other stuff, and the impurities, the other stuff just falls away, and the copper floats over here and attaches to here, and this piece becomes bigger and bigger of nothing but pure copper. It's pretty cool. So I went back up here and I added that electrolytic cells are also used to split compounds. And then I just copy pasted the last slide, which I'm going to run out of time, so you'll have to read. You notice I didn't take a lot of notes. I'll really go over in the next video what you need to know for the quiz.
but make sure you read this over. Let me know if you have questions.